Hello everyone! Colorblindness is a disability that affects around 10% of the population, which makes it quite common. Less experienced game developers might easily overlook accommodating for colorblindness in their game design. So in this video, we'll be simulating colorblindness to see why colorblind modes are a necessary part of any game. Let's say, hypothetically, that you had eyeballs, and Let's say, hypothetically, for the sake of the argument, that you were playing your favorite game, Danganronpa 2. The monitor that you are playing on is emitting waves of light that enter the retina of your eyeballs. In your retina are special cells called cones that react to these waves of light. There are three types of cones. The L cone is sensitive to longer wavelengths and is what allows us to see red. The M cone is sensitive to medium wavelengths and allows us to see green. And lastly, the S cone is sensitive to short wavelengths and is what allows us to see blue. The sensitivities of these cones are modeled with something called a sensitivity function, where we input a wavelength and output how sensitive that cone is to that wavelength. The overlapping of these sensitivities is why we are able to see blends of color such as yellow and orange. One fun fact is that these sensitivities vary from person to person due to genetic mutation, so the reds that you see might be slightly different from the reds that others around you see. Now, knowing how we see color is cool and all, but what about color blindness? Research on simulating colorblindness was lacking until 2009 when Machado et al. published their paper, A Physiologically Based Model for Simulation of Color Vision Deficiency, and at this point, it's still the only good paper on the subject. Their model is based on the two-stage theory of color vision, which takes our model from earlier one step further. The output of the L, M, and S cones are linearly combined into their color opponents. The outputted combinations are how bright the color appears to us, yellow minus blue, and red minus green. This second stage is important because it informs us how much a cone affects a given output. As you can see, the L and M cones are exclusively responsible for how bright a color appears, with the L cone making up 60% of that perceived brightness. Machado's colorblindness model is pretty simple conceptually. At the ground floor, all they are doing is taking the sensitivity function of a given cone and shifting it left or right. A small shift means slight colorblindness, but a large shift will result in that cone's sensitivity function completely overlapping with another, which is the same as if the cone was completely absent. Obviously, they do a little bit more math than that, but I'm not going to explain it because they didn't provide the sensitivity functions they used, so it would be hard for me to visualize it for you. I ended up using their pre-computed matrices for my demonstrations and shader. If you're interested in the math details, the paper is in the description below. The shader for colorblindness is pretty simple. Machado's model is based on a severity value from 0 to 1, where 0 is no colorblindness and 1 is complete colorblindness. We are provided with 10 matrices for each type of colorblindness. Each matrix is computed with increasing severity in steps of 0.1. We import these matrices into our shader, shove them into an array, and then we take the severity value we want, for example, 0.46. We multiply it by 10 and take the floor to get the index of the first colorblindness matrix. Then, we add 0.1 to the severity value and multiply it by 10 and take the floor to get the index of the second colorblindness matrix. But we make sure that these values don't exceed 10 so that we don't get an index out of bounds error. Secondly, we multiply our original severity value by 10 and take the fractional part to use as the interpolation value between the two matrices. Lastly, we multiply this matrix with our color to simulate the colorblindness. The first type of colorblindness, protonomaly, is the malfunction of the L cone. If the L cone is entirely missing, it's called protonopia. This form of colorblindness is present in about 1% of the population and is a form of red-green colorblindness since it affects the red-green color opponent. Protonopia is unique in that those who have it also see colors as a little bit darker than others since the L cone contributes the most to perceived brightness. The second type of colorblindness, deuteranomaly, is the malfunction of the M cone. If the M cone is missing, it's called deuteranopia. This kind of colorblindness is the most common, present in about 7% of the population. Deuteranopia is pretty much the exact same as protonopia, but without the dimming effect, since those with deuteranopia still have their L cones. 
The last type of color blindness, tried anomaly, is the malfunction of the S cone. If the S cone is missing, it's called tridinopia, and it's so rare that, as far as I know, there's no real statistic for it. Tridinomaly is blue-yellow color blindness and isn't as disabling as the other two forms of blindness since the S cone doesn't actually do all that much for your vision. Tridinopia results in blues being pushed toward green and yellows looking pinkish. To better understand how colorblindness affects the appearance of video games, let's look at a practical example. In League of Legends, allies have green health bars and enemies have red health bars. If a player had deuteranopia, then the game would look something like this. Ally health bars now look really similar to enemy health bars, with only a mild difference in value, making it pretty difficult to tell if a player is an enemy or not at a glance. Now, League of Legends averages 130 million monthly players, and if we assume 8% of them have some form of red-green color blindness, then about 10.4 million players will be at a disadvantage, which is quite a lot. Thankfully, League of Legends provides a colorblind mode in the options, which changes ally health bars to bright yellow when enabled. This allows colorblind players to differentiate allies from enemies based on brightness instead of hue. As much as I'd like to show off more examples, I had about one day to make this video, so if you'd like to use my shaders to see how your own games look as someone with colorblindness, they are in the description as usual. Thanks for watching everyone! Sorry if you found out you're colorblind from this, but I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.